Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, I've got some recycling in mind for one of the things behind my head here, so stick around, you may be able to help me figure it out. So let's dive into the pens. Alright, so these are the pens that I'm using this week. Uh, from left to right, I have the Super Rotax, which was my first impression this week. I have a Parker Citrine, or sorry, Parker Dual Fold Citrine. Um, I had something intelligent to say there, but it slipped out of my brain. I have a Caveco Lilliput. I have a Noodler's Conrad. I have a Platinum Curridas. Pilot Custom 823. And two Parker Vectors. So yeah, the selection's a little down this week. I'm actually planning on a trip soon. I won't tell you exactly when, but I'm trying to, uh, you know, have fewer pens inked up when I leave for the trip. And the Caveco is one of the ones that'll be going with me on the trip because it can ride in my pocket. As always, I'll be using this Cognitive Surplus Notebook. <laughs> I almost wrote June 25th, 2025. So the Super Rotax you just saw this week. It's a gray pen with a metal cap, German made. I'm kind of guessing from the 1970s. Uh, squared off finial, which is interesting. And the other finial squared off. And it's even a piston filler, which I didn't expect. And then the nib actually reminds me of a platinum preppy. Although the feed is a bit different. Super Rotax! I need an echo effect to go with that. Can't remember now if that's a fine, extra fine, or what. It doesn't seem to be written on it anywhere, so... That looks like a fine. And the ink, of course, is Parker Quink. Washable blue. And I haven't really made a dent in the ink level, even though I've done a lot of writing with it since... Uh, what day was it? Well, since I got it out... Oh, on Monday is when I got it out. Filmed the uh, talking part of my review. It's just uh, very fine, so it doesn't use a lot of ink. So, maybe not a pen you use to show off your fun inks, but maybe a pen you use for taking notes. Or, you know, doing business-like things, filling out forms and all that. That's why I like to have a variety of nibs, because then you have, what's, what's the old saying, different strokes for different folks? So, very different pen is this... Uh, Parker Dual Fold International with the citrine finish. So, I bought two pens this year with uh, the money I get from running the ads on the channel. So, uh, thank you. You paid for this pen. I've also done a lot of writing with this pen. And unlike some of the others, I don't think this one will be going with me because, uh, well, first of all, I'd be afraid of something happening to it. But the other reason is I think it's going to be empty. Uh, the ink in it is Deatramentus. Mint Turquoise. which I guess is one of Rachel Goulet's favorite inks. And I can see why. It's a very nice color. And this is a good pen for showing it off. 
Uh, this is an ink, by the way, that will also work in a fine nib. Um, you know, you won't see all the effects in it, the shading and so on, but it will still have a nice color in a fine nib. <clears throat> my next pen, because hopefully for at least part of next week I'll be wearing my shorts and uh, wandering around in the great outdoors, is a Caveco Lilliput. This pen is too small to use comfortably. It is absolutely perfect for writing notes. And I happen to like writing with this better than I like writing with the Caveco Sport model. Uh oh. Unless it's out of ink. Okay, it's writing again. Didn't see that coming. So, Caveco Lilliput with a medium nib. And the ink in it, I think, because it was an empty car or I'm sorry, not an empty cartridge, an unlabeled ca cartridge. I think it's Diamine Ancient Copper. Uh, judging by the color, that's my best guess. And I know at one point I bought some of those cartridges. So, there you go. So yeah, th this is a pen. I wouldn't take notes with it, but I'd keep it uh, just to jot something down. You know, maybe go hiking and I'll have a pocket notebook with me. So then this can jot notes in what I think is ancient copper. Unless it pulls that stunt again, so I should probably check the ink level. Uh, interesting annoying thing with this that I like better about the Caveco Sport uh, you have to screw it on to the end oh I got lots of ink in there I don't know what the problem was but anyway I get oh although I guess maybe I'd be a little afraid of this falling out of my pocket so maybe I will use the Caveco Sport after all on it Uh, Noodler's Conrad Ebonite. I filled it up with uh, um, Parker, no gosh darn it, Platinum Carbon Black. This one may or may not be empty. I've mostly been using it for en envelopes. And this is a pen I don't mind taking apart to clean. Um, these types of nano inks take a little more hand holding to have them in a pen but they're great for envelopes because they're permanent and I do mean permanent basically have to destroy the paper to get them off because they are it's actually instead of a pigment it's a suspended nanoparticles in the solution I had been thinking well I'll wait till I do it I've got some ideas about using it one or two of my noodlers Conrads uh, differently than they've been used because if you've been following pens in use, they have not been used. This is a Platinum Curry Doss. I don't know, it looks a little overexposed this time. I don't know what I did differently. But it was so underexposed the last time I did this, so I guess we'll live. Uh, Platinum Curry Doss. It's uh, Platinum's retractable pen, and I like it. Somewhere on my channel I have a comparison of the of four different retractable pens. Uh, I've sold the uh, Lamy Dialogue 3. I traded the Pilot Fermo. There's something 
one of you may have guessed it, uh, that's going to happen with the pilot vanishing point. And this, well, we'll see. I'm going to keep this one. I am kind of wishing, though, I'd put black in it now because uh, it suddenly occurred to me because one of the things I'll be doing next week is taking a class. Roche is... I totally misspelled that. Zuku. We'll just write over it. Uh, Murasaki Shikabu. Uh, I'm taking a class next week and it is kind of nice. Wow! Murasaki Shikabu. Shikabu. And it is kind of nice to have a retractable fountain pen when you take a class. Uh, it was actually during a, a chemistry class I took a few years ago that I decided, no, I don't like writing with this Lamy dialogue. I wrote with it once or twice since then just to see, but yeah. I mean, beautiful piece of engineering, just not the pen for me. So I'm glad it's in a better home. Snork this up a little bit. The pen I was going to use for my note taking is this Platinum Custom 823. Oh, uh, yeah, and I better put some more ink in it before I do that. And it's not a Platinum, it's a Pilot Deepers. It's also 8.40 at night, so I will use that as my excuse. So Pilot Custom 823 with a fine nib, and the ink in it is Pelican 4001 Brilliant Black. And overall, it's a good note-taking pen. It holds a lot of ink. Um, you know how much ink it holds. It's a I, this one has a fine nib, so you know you're not going to do anything fancy with it. You can just take notes, and it works on a lower quality paper because it is such a fine nib. And this ink is generally good on lower quality paper anyway. Alrighty, so now we get to. Why did I have two Parker Vectors? I could tell some of you were deeply offended that I had two of the same pen. Well, I got a bunch of these, actually super cheap. Um, but anyway, it's because we're going to dip test them. So they both have medium nibs. So a while back, I'm trying to remember how far back, it's been a few weeks. I had a few viewers upset with me saying, are you sure that ink is what you think it is? And I'm like, well, yes, it's on the bottle. Jeez. There it is. So Robert Oster, Fire and Ice. And they said, no, it is not that color, and it is a sheen monster. I'm like, well, mine isn't. <laughs> so, uh... One of my viewers, I don't know if he wants to be identified, so we'll just say a southern gentleman, sent me a sample of his own Robert Oster Fire and Ice. And of course I have my bottle of Robert Oster Fire and Ice. So, I don't want to fill up the pens, plus they don't have converters in them, because I'm too cheap to buy converters for these pens. So I'm going to dip test, so... Dip testing. So we'll call this Southern. Let's see, Southern, gosh darn it. Fire and ice. And then we'll dip it again. We'll give it a good swatch. And let's do a nice vertical swatch too while I'm here. I don't know, Southern man. Hey, that's a song. <laughs> um, not seeing a whole lot of sheen there. See a little bit of sheen around the lip of the bottle, but I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick that up. Okay, and then my fire and ice.
we'll call it Northern Fire and Ice, because I'm, you know, Northern. At least compared to where he lives. I don't know. They look a lot the same to me, so it could be something about my color on this camera's off. I, I, like I said, I, I need to do something different with the lighting on my writing samples. And uh, I'm not 100% sure what. I know one thing that would help would be, you know, use a camera where I can actually adjust the settings. But, you know. So, uh, if you want to get a closer look, oops, I do take uh, photographs of these writing samples and post them on... Uh, Evernote, so there will be a link to the writing sample on the, I think I, I always write close up. All right, so usually I try to say something controversial, but today what I want to talk about is I have a project in mind. Okay, I liked that better. I got to work on my lighting. But anyway, I have a project in mind for um, this project box there right there that wooden box over my head it's an old microscope case we'll take a closer look at it here in a minute um, but basically I'm putting this out there because I want to get a little feedback and get some ideas from you so uh, yeah let me know what you think okay we're up a little higher now uh, you can kind of see part of why this is going to happen because I've got my pen upcoming uh, first impressions laying over here yeah, I've been busy repairing pens. And I've got a night's video laying there. So this is the monstrosity. So you're looking at its slightly, oh yeah, very dusty top. Uh, so now I've got it laid on its back. Has nice construction, you know, it's plywood. But then it has... Is that called tongue and groove, I think? It's very nice construction, very solid. It's an old microscope case. Arr. Don't hit the lights, okay. Uh, inside, we've got pretty good room. I wanna just take my tallest pen, put it up against the side. See, I got lots of room here. Uh, you can see down toward the bottom, this is where the base of the microscope would have slid in. I have no idea what ever happened to the microscope. This was just an empty box in my classroom, and I was decluttering, and uh, I thought, I'll bet I could use that. So, what I'm thinking, let me grab a, okay, I gotta move these pans off of their nice tray. So we'll edit this little bit out. So what I'm thinking, over on the coffee table in my living room, I have one of these, only it's gray, uh, covered with pen parts, just kind of laid out in various stages of dissection. Um, and, and then I have a dinner plate covered with pens that are waiting to be dissected. And, you know, it works, but... I was very awkward answering questions about it. So uh, what I was thinking, let's see, oh yeah. Maybe I get a few more of these. I can cut them up. Now I'm gonna have to cut one end off of them because I've got, you can't really see it, but this is about, I don't know, two inches, um, I don't know, five, six centimeters too much. And I'm going to cut off more than that. But cut these. And then I could stack them. You know, up and down this. Now the only thing is they are floppy as all get out. So, you know, hold them, you put weight on them, and zoink, they're curved. So I'm going to have to put some kind of support under them. 
and so I haven't worked out all the details what I want to use, but what I'm thinking as a project, we'll put pieces of wood down the side. I probably would only glue them in. Uh, the trickiest part would be lining them up so they're level. But anyway, pieces of wood down the side to act as little platforms. And then each of those trays would be a drawer that I could pull out. And then I could have my different pen projects all neatly stacked in here. And put it away when I'm not using it. And I could actually, because it's going to hold so many pens, I could actually hold completed projects that I haven't done videos on yet in here. So, uh, I'm seeing a lot of potential in it. So I just got to think, what am I going to use as supports and as pieces of wood? Uh, you know, I almost am thinking balsa wood, but I, I don't know. So I got to think through that a little bit more. So that's where uh, I'm, I'm crowdsourcing and asking if you have ideas. You know, I, uh, I want wood that's fairly stiff, but also fairly thin, because I don't want to waste a lot of space with these pieces of wood. And what I could probably do... Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud of a difficulty that just came to me. I could probably glue them to the bottoms of those trays that I've cut up. Um, they can act as support. I could probably even, like, the front have one of those pieces of wood all the way across, and the back maybe not quite all the way across. So then it'll, you know, pull out as a drawer. I'm thinking that's a pretty easy way to do it. Or is there a better way to stiffen those plastic pieces, those trays? Or is there a better tray that I could use that would be stiffer? You know, that's where I don't know. You know, I suppose I could just have flat pieces of wood in there, but that almost seems kind of silly. Because then I have to cut it all. You know, I, I don't have the best tools. So, yeah, I think I'll stick with the trays because I can cut them with scissors. Um, anyway, a little bit of a project for me this summer. Besides, I've got another big-time mechanical project I'm working on this summer. And, of course, trying to not spend a lot of money this summer. So, um, waiting on a roof, you know. So, uh... Okay, yeah, that got my creative juices going. And actually, one thing that just occurred to me, chopsticks are cheap. And they're stiff. So I may be buying a lot of chopsticks this summer and cutting them up. Hmm. I thought they would work. Yeah, especially because they don't have to be all the way. They would work as sides. I'd have to be, you know, fairly accurate cutting up the trays, but... Yeah, I think I've got something. So I'm, I'm going to play with it. I, I'm not somebody who's just going to jump in and start cutting and gluing. I'm probably going to be thinking about this and finally start working on it in July because I, I just have to think through things. Maybe before July, but... It might be July, because I'm going to have to order more of those pen trip. Or do I have some in my basement? I know I have one or two spares. Well, I'll have to find out. So, anyway, yeah, that's uh, the project I'm thinking about for making my living room not look like a pen cabinet. So I've already got a pen cabinet in here. I don't need more. All right, so that's the uh, project I have in mind. I... Uh, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you my coffee table, but it's basic, basically become fountain pen central. <laughs> and I want it to be a coffee table again. So I, I feel like I can store in there more compactly and, more importantly, out of sight when I have guests. Because, like, this has to go hide under the bed or something when, I'm, when I have guests. So, uh, anyway, uh, any ideas about support or whatever, let me know down in the comments. Well, thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.